Hello, in this video we are going to look at doing bounding box collision in a Cocos 2DX JavaScript project. If you're interested in C++, then check out our video on bounding box collision for C++. So what is bounding box collision? Simply put, it draws, actually you don't really see it, but it's a box that is around your image and if these two boxes collide or, or overlap each other, intersect, then a collision is detected. But it doesn't take account for anything like alpha or anything like that because it doesn't know what your sprite or your node is because you can do it on any node really. You don't, it doesn't know what your game has in terms of objects. So if you look at th this image, you've got two circles and a box has been drawn around it. In this instance, because it's a circle, the actual boxes are squares, but they could be rectangles as well. So basically it's a square or a rectangle that gets drawn around it and because these two squares have overlapped right here where it is in red it has detected a collision but the actual items themselves haven't collided so that's just something to bear in mind it's a great easy way of doing collision detection but it's not always the most efficient but again chances are if you're here you probably already know the ins and outs of bounding box collision and you just want to know how to implement it. At the moment we've got this really simple application which has two sprites and we can move the sp second sprite around and what we're going to do do a simple log when we overlap the sprite like so so it will detect collision. For that what you want to do is just go on to the touch moved event though I'm Actually, before I get coding, I'm going to open this in an external text editor simply because the code formatting for Cocos 2D, I mean JavaScript in general, in Xcode is terrible. Though I'm doing it in the untouched move, you could do it when some other event is being triggered, when you're using an update method every frame, anything really. You can put it wherever you want. First of all, we need to create a rect, which stands for rectangle, which is the bounding box for each of our objects, so sprite 1, I've already created the sprites up here, but you can use a menu button really, it doesn't really matter, dot get bounding box, and we want to do the same for sprite 2, so just chain this to 2, chain this to 2, and now we can actually detect if collision has occurred, to do that you do if cc dot rect intersects rect now you specify the two rects that you want to detect collision between so you put rect1 rect2 and if it makes it into this if statement then we're just going to do a cc.log which just says collided else cc.log not collided and now we're actually ready to run this. So if we just go back to Xcode, run this now. So as you can see, I'm moving it around. It says not collided, not collided. But when I touch it, it says collided. And it's that simple to detect collision. You might be wondering, what happens if you were to scale one of the items? The collision still works because it's based on the item size. So, if I were to just do sprite one dot set scale, I'm gonna set the scale to 0 0.4. And anything smaller than that, it just you can't really see it too well. So, okay, I'm moving this around. So it's not collided. As you can see, I've got very close to the sprite. Let me just zoom in so you can see how far or how close. But it still says not collided. Same with the bottom, the right. Simply put, if this sprite right here was at its original scale, it would have de detected collision by now because they would have intersected. Whereas at the moment they haven't. But if I go closer, now it's collided. So it works when you're scaling. Another great thing, I'll, I'll put it in here instead of sublime. Another great thing about bounding box collision or rect collision, as it's sometimes called, is that you can also detect when the user has touched a particular item. So what I'm going to do is just comment 
out the untouched moved the untouched ended I'm gonna comment this out I'm also even going to comment this out so what we're gonna do is just detect if the user has touched the first sprite so let's just remove this guy or just comment here because it's gonna be really small and to do that you do var rect1 equals sprite1 dot get bounding box so we're getting the bounding box of the node that we want to interact with but instead of getting the bounding box of another node because we are touching it instead we want to do var touch point equals touch dot get location not y or x we just want the general location because we want to know whether it's touching it in that specific point and there we do if fifi dot rect contains point so what we're doing here is checking if rect1 contains the touch point aka have the user touched a particular node if so I'm just going to do cc dot log touched else cc dot log not touched and now we can actually run this so let's just run this in our simulator so if I click outside it says not touch not touch not touch again not touch if I click this sprite not touch because we're detecting touch with the first sprite and I'm quite close click it still not touch still not touch but if I click it inside it says touch 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 and now not touch so that's how you can use bounding box collision for detecting when a particular item has been touched that isn't let's say a menu item which is fantastic maybe you're dragging around certain aspects from your screen but you only want to drag them around when you actually touch that particular let's say sprite so that's it very simple stuff if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to post them on our education platform sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash question.php there'll be a link in the description plus check out sonar learning because he has thousands of free videos plus there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment and as usual, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.